Hello and welcome to Python Fundamentals. In this course, we learn the underpinning Python programming skills, preparing for our journey towards mastering the Django framework and the Python programming language. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials. You can find the link to the whole playlist in the video description. This tutorial is from our Python Programming Fundamentals for Django Developers course, which you can find and purchase on Udemy. You will find all the latest and updated tutorials, as well as resources and assessments to help accelerate your learning of the subject. The link to the course, which will always provide the best price, can be found in the video description. Having now learnt the basics of a for loop in Python, we can now go ahead and apply this to our Django project. So let's first of all look at how we can loop through a Django query set. And then in the next tutorial, we go ahead and we utilize this information and actually loop through the data and output that to our template. Straight back into our project, let's go over to the new app here and views. Now we have been previously utilizing the terminal to open up a Python shell to run queries. But let's now utilize, utilize our view to build a query like we did previously, but now return that data and print it to the terminal. Okay, so we can probably go ahead now and remove this data here. And we'll just go ahead and remove this context here for now. We don't need that. So we're just returning the index page at the moment. Right, so this is the home page. So let's now go ahead and build a query. So like I said previously, we utilize the terminal to build a query or query set. So let's now do this in our view. Now we learned from building a query set in the terminal that we need to bring in the resource first. So from dot models, let's import our model, our table. Our table is called customer. Okay, so let's bring in this table. So now we have that resource available. We can now go ahead and build our query set. So customer dot, remember we need the manager, the default manager, which is objects. And now we can run some methods from the query set API. So we're just gonna be utilizing all. Now remember, this is going to be triggered whenever we navigate to the home page, because remember the home page, the root page here is connected to our view. Our view is then going to be run, executed, and we're gonna pass back the template to the user, to the browsers of the user. Now, in between that, our piece of code here, our code line 12 is going to be executed. We're going to grab the data from the database and return that into this variable X. So let's go ahead and now run a for loop like we learned previously. So for, and uh, we need some arbitrary kind of value. So let's just go for value in X. And let's just go ahead and we'll just print this to the terminal for now. Let's just print out val. So anytime we go to the home page, this is going to be triggered. So now what you need to do is start the server, run server. So I open up the 12701-8000 in my browser. We get a little bit of a message here. Hello, my name is. Now we removed the variable so we don't get the name. So let's go back into our code here and you can see that in our terminal, we are indeed printing out all of the objects that we've returned through our query set here from our database and we're printing them out via this for loop. Ultimately, it's a very simple and straightforward process because remember our query set is essentially just a list of objects. So because it is a list, we're able to use this simple built-in Python feature to loop through and access the data in our list. Now remember what we're returning here, remember, are three objects. It just happens to be printing out these names here because remember in our models, we define the Dunder string method, what to return by default, and that is the name. If we would change this, for example, to the age, let's give that a go. So let's go back in and refresh. Oy. We can now see that we can't use an integer, so we're going to need to cast that to a string, remember? This is a Dunder string method, so we cast that to a string. Again, just using our knowledge we previously learned. So let's give that a go again, refresh. 
come back, you now see we're outputting the age because the default return is now the age and not the name. So I'm just going to change that back to self.name for now. Of course, that was a really simple example. Let's now move to the next tutorial. We'll put this into context for Django project and output the data from the query set onto a template.